Hey guys, welcome back to Thark channel. In this video, I will cover a summary of all the things I knew about the deep oceans of Coral Island, a little thought about the future content and basic diving guide and some tips that would help you in your gaming progress. Diving is one of the major gameplay in Coral Island, as the main goal here is to restore all the coral regions and revive all the coral sites by cleaning the ocean bed through solar orb activation, which you will find while eliminating the trash and debris around the area using a site. As you go diving, you will gain experience points and level up your diving mastery up to level 10. This includes clearing trash, cutting kelps, and gathering ocean forages scattered around the area. The higher the grade of forage item you get, the higher the experience points you gain. Once you unlock diving in early game, you can access the ocean anytime from 6 in the morning until 11 in the evening. You will automatically be teleported back to diving pier when you pass the time limit. While clearing the area, you will obtain essential resources such as glass, scrap, wood, compost, hardwood, and stones from random debris and some rare coffers that you can only find underwater, specifically the Shimmering Coffer, which contains specific artifacts that you can donate to the museum to increase your town rank. There are plenty of forageable items in the ocean, such as seaweed, sea salt, and different types of clams and mussels that are just around the corner. And the highlight amongst all is the kelp, which is the key ingredient to make an essence that will be used in enhancing seeds to produce a higher grade crops. This can be achieved by providing the necessary materials to link in the laboratory. Like ores from the mine, the kelp are also classified by grade as we have bronze, silver, gold, and osmium kelps. All obtainable in the game except for osmium kelp. So far, I haven't found a way to obtain one, unlike the ores, which are possible to be obtained by method or by chances. There are also ocean critters that you can catch depending on the time and season when you do your diving. These critters can also be donated in the museum and you can catch it by also using the bug net. Like fishing and bug catching, some critters can easily be caught and some will be quite challenging and will test your patience for a while. Here are all the list of ocean critters that you may encounter in the game. You'll see some ocean critters are already in the game database but is yet to be implemented or discovered in the actual game. These are pom-pom crab, upside down jellyfish, cannonball jellyfish, sea slug, and cardinal shrimp which could also be categorized as a fish or another in the future. Apart from clearing trash and gathering essential forages in the ocean, the main goal is to restore all the coral sites and Right now, the total number of solar orbs you can unearth is 41 within a maximum depth of 42 meters underwater. Here is the current map of Coral Island South Diving Point including the marked location of each coral towers or site in the game. I also included the location of the Turtle Gate Guardians that you need to feed in order to pass through the lower levels of the ocean. In this map, you'll also see the existing ocean forages for your guidance in completing your collection and offerings. Also, like the critters, there are some forages in the visuals like arame, red urchin, and green urchin that you might find new as these objects are yet to be found in the game and could be included in the future update. For beginners, I have made a guide of items you will need in order to pass through the turtle guardians in the ocean. The guardians will ask a specific item which changes depending on the season you approach to feed them. And here's the list for your guidance. Here are some tips and guides that you might find helpful in your gaming progress. Number 1. Beach Festival During this festival, you can get the chance to do diving without time limit, at least in early access which I think for those who wants to finish cleaning a specific region without any time pressure, it would help a lot. Just note that you won't be able to collect the items while the festival is ongoing and it's only possible after ending it and you can collect all the loot you drop on that day until 11pm in the game 
which is very efficient if you slow down the time by 50% via game settings. Number 2. Keep all the trash. Later on, the trash will be one of the most in-demand items in the game. Instead of using it on aesthetics or other equipment, you may consider using it on making sprinklers that will save you from watering your crops daily and making kegs that will provide you artisan products that will give more profit than regular crops. Last but not the least, save for yourself. All the things that you've gathered always make it a habit not to sell all the excess and always keep yourself a few pieces of everything. Eventually, it will come in handy in the future. I'd like to get this chance to thank all my viewers and subscribers for watching my videos for the past few weeks. And it's way more than you can imagine how happy I am to know that you found something helpful to your game from this. Thank you so much. Still, I'm brewing for some more content and I guess that will be all for now. Until my next video, happy gaming everyone. Play it your way.